Hello, my friend. Stay a while and listen. What's going on, guys? It's Filthy, and I'm back with another video. Today we're taking a look at the Horde of the 90 Savages, which is the Barbarian's new set. This is going to be a T16 and GR speed farm, doing GR18 in 3 minutes pretty consistently. Haven't really had time to min-max the gear or juice it up too much, so I do think it probably could go a bit further with some augments and a bit of juice. It's a bit different, it's quite fun to play, you run around really quickly, going absolutely berserk, so it is kind of nice. Probably not as strong as Whirlwind, probably not worth your time unless you really enjoy Frenzy, but it is nice to do something a little bit different and you know maybe this could be a key farming build for you. Now I do think the set probably will make a better push build than speed build. I'm going to make that guide later because this speed farm does make use of the season theme which opens up the cube allowing us to put whatever we want in there and I think the push build probably won't make use of that mechanic and also I think there's a chance this set number might get tweaked because it still looks like maybe whirlwind will be a better push build and i think it could do with a little bit of juice so we'll make that guide once the ptr is finished and the patch is live but before we get into it i just want to welcome anyone who's new to the channel hit that subscribe button if you haven't already done so as always guys a thumbs up is greatly appreciated now looking at the gear we're going to take the set bonus we're going to take five pieces because we're also going to be running the depth digger trousers so the two piece gives us basically double the effectiveness of our shouts, that's pretty handy, we've got some pretty nice shout effects. We also deal double damage to feared or frozen enemies, we're going to get the fear off, we're not really going to get frozen. Now you can roll frozen on a secondary on certain gear pieces, again I haven't had time to min max that, but that's certainly an option to eke out a bit more damage. But in general we're going to be relying on the fear mechanic and we'll get to that with the skills. Four piece, each frenzy stack reduces damage taken by 6% and frenzy lasts twice as long. We're going to have 10 stacks, that's 60% damage reduction, pretty handy. And then moving on to the six piece, frenzy deals 1000 increased damage per stack. So again, 10 stacks, 10,000% modifier. Now importantly, we're going to take the undisputed champion. Frenzy is going to gain the effect of every rune. We'll go through them on the skills. There's some pretty nice ones in there. We also get up to 400% extra damage on the modifier and I try and roll frenzy damage on the belt if you can. As the build revolves around Frenzy, which is a primary skill, we're going to take Depth Diggers. That's going to give us up to double damage, which is really nice. We're also going to take the Oathkeeper weapon. Primary skills will attack 50% faster and deal up to 200% damage. So again, another nice modifier. And then in the cube, we've got the new reworked Bastions Revered. This will allow Frenzy to stack 10 times. That's where we get our 10 Frenzy stacks from. We also get an additional hit, which will chain to enemies within 15 yards. And the damage is split between them. So we do get a kind of like growing effects when we hit things this kind of area does spread out we're also going to magnify that with the skills a little bit or maybe not magnify but synergize with it so the idea is just that we're not just doing complete single target we do have a little bit of area of effect now the build is all about speed and we're going to take the larceny ring what this will do is we gain up to 60 percent move speed whenever we fear things fearing obviously synergizes really well with the two piece because we get double damage against feared enemies so this will be going off quite a lot so we do run around really quickly Again, helping with the speed theme, we've got Ingium, so when we kill an elite pack and all the adds, we get 10 seconds off all of our cooldowns for 15 seconds. Really handy because we've got a mechanic that's going to be very helpful for grouping up enemies. And also we're going to take the Messerschmitt's Reaver in the cube. This is going to really help with bringing Wrath of the Berserker up. So every time we kill something, we get one second off our cooldown. So basically, picks a skill at random, reduces it by one second. With this, with the Ingeum, with some cooldown on the gear and in the helm, we've got really good uptime on pretty much all of our abilities, so pretty nice. To manage our toughness, we're going to take Band of Might. Whenever we Ground Stomp, which is the skill we're going to be using to proc this, we get 80% damage reduction. Ground Stomp is going to be very important for grouping enemies up, so we will be using it quite a lot. So again, 80% toughness, pretty handy. Nemesis Braces, because this is a speed build, you don't need to worry about Elemental, you can match that with your Rune on Frenzy, because remember you get all of them, so just make sure you've got Crit Hit, Chance and Strength on there, and you should be fine. We're also going to take the Flavor of Time, which is going to give us a double effect on our Pylons, absolutely amazing for speed drifting, and we also eke out a bit more cooldown from this item. And the last item is the Rogue, which will go in the cube to make up our 6 piece set bonus. Legendary gem wise, Simplicity Strength will give us another modifier on the Frenzy. We'll also heal us, so that's quite nice. When we do hit, we get 4% maximum health. A Bane of the Powerful is going to give us a flat 20% damage increase once we've killed our first elite. We also get extra elite damage and extra elite damage reduction, both very nice. 
then finally a bane of the trap to give us a flat damage increase the fear counts as a cc but obviously it procs itself anyway with your aura and this is a very close range build so just extra damage all the time which obviously is pretty good the gems and the gear you want strength gems in trousers and also in chest piece and then i'd say cooldown in the helm if you are struggling for a little bit of squishiness you can also swap this out for a life gem but cooldown will probably be the way that i would go so looking at the skills, Ground Stomp, Wrenching Smash, this will allow us to suck enemies within 25 yards and stunning them, which is really nice because it means they won't move. That is even if we get our fear off, which is on Threatening Shell. So Ground Stomp is just amazing. It'll group enemies up, it'll lock them in place. They can then be feared and smashed to bits with Frenzy and the double damage. Now it's on a 12 second cooldown, so once your Ingium is procced, it reduces it to two seconds. Then you take your CDR off, so you know you can get this down to kind of just over a second. Plus, whenever you kill something, you've got a pretty good chance of it procking. So it's almost got unlimited uptime once you get your Messerschmitt up, once you get your Ingium up. So again, pretty nice, very useful for grouping enemies because you don't want them fearing and running away. For Frenzy, I've got Sidearm selected because I've got Cold on my braces, but you get all the runes. I'd say Vanguard's pretty nice because we're going to get 50% move speed for this. We also get Smite, which gives us a chance of the stun, which is pretty nice. And we also get increased damage from Maniac. So, yeah, pretty nice these last two runes. First two don't too matter, but it's nice to have all of them. Threatening Shout, Terrify. We're going to numlock this because we want it going off constantly. We want to basically fear as many enemies as possible. We also want to proc the last new ring with that effect. Now, it's on a 10 second cooldown. So, once Injum is up, this then just goes off constantly. It's unlimited cast time, which is great. And then with Ground Stomp, Wrenching Smash, you can lock enemies in place. So occasionally we'll have to Benny Hill chase after something. But in general, if you can catch it quickly enough with Ground Stomp, then it should be locked in place and you can smash it to bits. The enemies also do a little bit less damage with this rune, so again, helps with the toughness. Battle Rage Bloodshed. Now, one of the issues with the build, really, and why it's probably not as good as Whirlwind, even though it probably outputs more damage on a single target in a shorter time frame, is you just can't wave clear effectively. Now we do have the Bastion's Revere kind of giving us the area of effect. Battle Rage Bloodshed will also help, so this will basically detonate our crits around us, so we get this kind of effect where whenever we crit we get a little explosion afterwards. Again, all these shouts are doubled, so threatening shouts doubled, battle rage is doubled, so again, you know, it is pretty handy, it does help with clearing like areas of trash. Plus it gives us extra damage as well, which is nice. Sprint Marathon, this will give us 40% move speed, 100% uptime on this. Again, you could well numlock this because you've got so much fury that it doesn't really matter. But again, 40% move speed for four seconds, pretty handy. And Wrath of the Berserker, Insanity, 50% extra damage, increased crit chance, increased attack speed, dodge chance, and 20% move speed. So we move like absolute grease lightning between the threatening shout procking the last new ring for 60%. Sprint Marathon 40%, 20% for Wrath of the Berserker, we do go pretty quick. Now you can swap Battle Rage onto the move speed room, so again that's another one that you can go for. I just found it's a little quicker to clear with Bloodshed, but again you can mess around with that. For the passives, Pound of Flesh is going to give us more move speed whenever we pick up Health Globes, so again move speed being the theme here. Nerves of Steel in case something goes wrong, we'll get Cheat Death, so that's quite handy. Rampage will give us extra strength, stacking up to 25 times, so 25% strength, really, really nice. And Berserker Rage, 25% damage at Max Fury, or near enough. As we're at Max Fury pretty much all the time, this seems to make sense. But if you find you're over-spamming Sprint, you can swap it out to Brawler, that again would give you a little bit more damage. And another choice would be Boon of Bulkathos to reduce the Wrath of the Berserker cooldown by 30 seconds, but I've just found these four to be my favourite, but again, totally swappable, up to you. So when you get into the rift, threatening shouts on numlock, that should be going off constantly. You want a ground stomp to get your toughness up, and then you're going to activate Wrath of the Berserker. Look for something to frenzy. Once you get up to 10 stacks, you're absolutely away. You can activate Battle Rage Bloodshed, Sprint Marathon for some move speed, and then you're just running around the map really quickly, looking for stuff to bash on the head. Pretty good. So to swap this to a T16 build, I've currently got the full set on, so we've lost the Rogue because we want to take the Avarice Band to make picking up gold super easy. We also want to take the Boon of the Hoarder so the enemies drop gold, so we're going to lose the Bane of the Powerful for that. We want to get Gold Wrap in to make us immortal so we can stand in explosions because we are a close range build. 
And if you do find you are not hitting hard enough, you can take the gold wrap out and put the depth digs back in, because that is obviously a double damage modifier. But GR75 T16 is fine with this. Again, the more you juice it up, the less need you'll have for the depth diggers in the cube. I'd still take the Reaver just to make sure that we get the Wrath of the Berserker up, but again, you could swap that out for Depth Diggers, so that would be another thing to do, but this is how I've got it set up, but again, with the season theme, it is pretty flexible. Plus, the nice thing is we get another 30% move speed from the Boon of the Hoarder, so again, we move slightly quicker on this build, albeit we deal a little bit less damage. And another consideration would be swapping the gem in the helm to an emerald, just to get a bit more gold for empowering those rifts. And I suppose for another T16 choice you could use Echoing Fury, that would give you more attack speed and more move speed, plus it has a chance to fear on hit on the weapon itself. So again, that could go on the character maybe instead of the Ingeome, and the Ingeome would go in the cube instead of the Reaver. But there's lots to play around, and again, we don't have too much time on PTR to min-max this, but it's pretty good for key farming, and it is pretty fun. Again, very similar playstyle, run around, smash stuff over the head repeatedly. Oddly therapeutic. So that's the build guys, I hope you like it, I hope you're excited for season 20. Definitely not better than Whirlwind, but it is something different. It's a bit more engaging to play, Whirlwind's a bit more brainless, so whether that's a good thing, whether that's a bad thing, obviously that's up to you to decide. Fingers crossed the set gets a little bit more juice, or maybe the two piece gets reworked to work on something like Taunt. That would be better, it would make the set better. But I'll be back with the push guide once the patch goes live, once we get nearer to season 20. Other than that guys, enjoy the rest of your day, I'll see you soon, take it easy, peace. Oh, <laughs> oh,